Hi everyone, namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of New Astrology. Welcome to the garden and welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the month of September 2022. Now I just had to be out here and park myself next to the zinnias so you could enjoy them. Um, you know, Virgo season brings in that liminal uh, change, right? Of, of going from the harvest to the to things starting to fall fall away and, and fall apart, right? As we prepare for fall and winter. Um, but my neighbor is engaged in that classic American activity of lawn maintenance. Um, he is a grass farmer, <laughs> and I don't mean eh, the entertaining kind, um, as many Americans are, and no judgment, but that noise is there, so um, I hope it's not too much. All right, so um, a couple, a couple things tone the whole month, okay? First, we've got that challenging um, almost square that's going to get close to closer to almost exact square in October uh, between Saturn and Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus. This was the main theme of 2021. We had three exact hits. We're not going to get another exact hit, but they're still doing the dance, right? They're still buttoned up against each other. Where is Aquarius in your chart? Where is, is Taurus in your chart? You need to harmonize them. This is what is bringing up all these issues with food. Uh, energy, resources, um, money, the planet, uh, you know, um, currencies, uh, the stock market, all these kinds of things, right? Um, Aquarius rules the masses. Um, Taurus is about resources and how you get practical earth plane things done, right? They're clashing. They have to be harmonized. And so that's a basic theme. There's also a ton of mercury energy this month, really big Lots of mental activity, lots of ideas. Make sure you're writing, expressing, and not just getting lost in that because Mars is in Gemini. So you also need to take action, okay? It's not enough just to think about it, okay? You gotta think, you gotta speak, you gotta do. All right, so let's hop in. We're gonna start out the month with Mars sending a nice energy over to Jupiter and Aries, right? So a little bit of, you know, a little bit of luck, expansiveness, a um, little bit of more grr, right? Because you think about that, Mars, is in um airs the natural ruler of aries and jupiter is in mars sign right and so when they have that synergy it's kind of sweet right it also is going to be having a wide the mars is going to have a wide trine up to the mercury which is moving forward in libra and is going to retrograde here coming up in um, mid-month so um again so much talking so much thinking so much mental activity all right now um We've got the Mercury opposing Jupiter and Aries. This is on the second. And so any kind of over the top mental energy, over the top expressions um, are gonna be, um, it's gonna blow up and blow up fast, all right? So another kind of edge to this month is a lot of argumentative energy, all right? Which is Mars and Gemini anyways, right? But with the opposition to the Jupiter, right? That's, you know, really kind of a, a, a thing to pay, pay attention to, the, the Mercury being across the sky. Lots of conversations also about relationships coming up for sure. All right, um, I'm looking at September 4th through the 12th, the planet Ceres, or not planet, asteroid, Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, like cereal, the goddess of grain, is gonna be opposite Saturn. So I'm looking at huge potential issues with food or food-related production. Um, so, you know, make sure that you've got your resources lined up, your systems lined up, your um, plan A, B, C, D, and E lined up as far as how you are going to feed yourself um, and your family during these times. Um, on the 5th, Venus moves into Virgo. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, Venus into Virgo, you know, really um, is a t totally new vibe, right? completely different. Um, it's, you know, uh, much more analytical, critical, uh, Venus and Virgo is nothing like Venus and Leo, right? <laughs> um, so look for that and watch that you're not hypercritical with yourself, your partners, your lovers, etc. All right. And on Tuesday, September 6th, we have the moon and Capricorn sending beautiful beams of energy, a blessing over to Uranus and Taurus. It's going to sextile Neptune, but it's going to come together with Pluto. Okay. This is such a big outer planet kind of energy. Um, looking at larger cycles, looking at some of the themes that have been really, you've been learning, learning, digging, digging on for the last several years. This also relates to the full moon that's coming up. So this is a great day to be journaling and paying attention to what's coming because um, this full moon is going to bring up a lot of those same themes. 
All right, on the 8th, we've got the moon in Aquarius, square Uranus, and Taurus. It's going to come together with Saturn, right? Moon, Saturn, heavy, a little, a little, uh, a little, you know, can be a little depressing, a little, you know, everything feels like so much work. So, you know, monitor your mind on the 8th. Um, on September 9th, we've got Mercury going retrograde uh, at 8 degrees in the sign of Libra. So the zone there, the shadow zone started August 20th. Um, it's going to retrograde station direct on 24 degrees of Virgo on October 2nd, um, but not really get past the degree that it um, has traversed until October 16th. So you're looking at the August 20th to October 16th is kind of like the, the Mercury retrograde season, right? Through the back end of um, uh, Virgo, the early degrees of Libra. So, you know, really look at those areas of life and see what you need to, you know, rethink or redo. It's just a, it's an opportunity for second chances. It's not um, something for you to be fearful of. Um, it's a great time for repairing, rethinking, redoing, reimagining. All right. I'm loving this full moon. It is on September 10th, um, 559 AM, 17 degrees, the sign of Pisces. It sextiles Uranus. It conjuncts Neptune and it sextiles Pluto. Like, whoa, like gorgeous outer planet energy. Um, a, a good, you know, a good moon. Do something with this moon wherever Pisces is for you. Um, or even just, you know, really um, letting go of any subconscious negative patterns, lineage patterns, um, you know, letting go of things that block your inspiration, your creativity, things that block your light. This is just take care, take, take advantage of this magic moon. Um, true node goes to 14 degrees, which means that the nodes are coming out of the engagement range with Uranus. So Uranus and the nodes are not dancing together as tightly. Um, but that also means that, that the Saturn is really going to be exerting its power over that Uranus. It's going to be a little bit more pure in that square without the nodes there. All right. Um, Moon in Taurus on the 14th is going to trine Venus in Virgo, conjunct Uranus Taurus, square Saturn. So that's really um, going to activate that Uranus Saturn square um, and have everything to do with resources and how you feel and what what is important to you and what your value system is. This is a um, kind of an evolution and revolution in values for us all, right? Um, you know, you've noticed the themes of how like things that weren't maybe valuable before all of a sudden become super valuable, right? You just assume that you're always going to have grain or gas or whatever. and all those things are coming up for re-examination. And so you have to do that on your inside too, right? Like, oh, I've always valued this or that. And now I don't care, right? It's like me and my, you know, I always wanted a five burner stove. And now I'm like, oh my God, like I just need one. <laughs> Why did I ever think I needed that? It's fascinating, isn't it? All right. Um, the 16th uh, has some blessings, but watch out. Venus and Virgo square Mars and Gemini. Um, there's a lot of moon action that day and the sun in Virgo is going to be right across the sky from Neptune and Pisces. Okay. So, um, you know, every so often one of my children will contact me and say like, mom, what planet can I blame all this on? <laughs> and this will be one of those days where you're like, I could blame a lot of different planets for what's going on. So it's a day to make sure that you have some space in your life to be adapt, adaptable, right? And as I'm speaking about being adaptable, my phone memory gets full. So, <laughs> I'm telling you what, I can never talk about Mercury retrograde without Mercury uh, managing some mischief. All right, let's see. Um, next few uh, days to really focus on for September. On the 18th, Mercury and Libra across the sky from Jupiter in Aries. Because of the retrograde, it does this twice, right? Um, and so you, uh, you know, really got to watch those themes of excess. Got to watch the mind. Um, Find that balance. Lots of conversations about um, communication with your spouse or your partner, things like that, with the energy bouncing from Aries to Libra. So just watch that. Um, this day you've got an aid though, Virgo, Sun, Trine, Pluto, and Capricorn. You got about three days of a nice vibe with the Sun um, in, into Capricorn, or uh, Trining um, Pluto in Capricorn. So, you know, um, it's good for making change, you know? It's good for like using that Virgo vision, right? To like see where you need to revolutionize the Capricorn area of your life. Those Capricorn lessons are coming in hard, man. We've got to finish them up. No, we've only, we've got, we've got Capricorn coming into Aries. Uh, we'll get a little sampling of that next year. All right, um, 
on the equinox, September 22nd. Wow, we're already there. That's when the sun goes to zero degrees of Libra. So happy solar return, beautiful Libra friends. Um, we've got a Leo moon. Um, so the Leo moon is really feeling kind of big these, those couple days. And so you want to um, just really moderate, tap into intuition. Leo moon has a great intuition. I mean, I just love that about Leo's. All right, um, the 24th, we've got Venus in Virgo right across the sky from the Neptune in Pisces. So, um, you know, clear away your delusion confusion because, again, you apply that Virgo vision and you'll, you'll find the way. Um, there's a, a kind of a long-standing flow of the Mercury having retrograded back into Virgo, trining Pluto in Capricorn from September 24th to October 9th. So, like, idea mode creative ideas like solutions presenting themselves so take advantage of that um, these are probably things you had to deal with before or things that have come up before but take a look and use that beautiful energy all right this uh the new moon of september is a like enormous energy moon just so much happening um it's on the 25th it's at one degree 59 minutes of libra so almost two degrees of libra it's at 5 55 p.m it stands right across the sky um, from Neptune. Um, well, it, it, oppo it opposes Neptune as it departs Virgo. So it's leaving Virgo, it's gonna oppose Virgo and then come to this new moon, right? Venus is, it's gonna touch Venus in Virgo. Um, it's gonna trine Pluto and Capricorn, conjunct the Mercury, conjunct the Sun, and then oppose the Jupiter. I mean, this is just, the, the journey of this moon is just a lot. Um, so looking at the late degrees of Virgo and the early degrees of Libra, where are those for you and how are you really um, going to renew yourself in that area, right? Look at that area of life with fresh eyes. All right. Um, on the 26th, Mercury retrograde touches the Venus in Virgo, Sun in Libra opposes the Jupiter in Aries. So uh, these other planets begin to traverse the same pathway as that moon. And so you might be having feelings and then all of a sudden the next day you'll have actual events that occur. So this is kind of a magical couple days, especially as far as manifestation, um, because we've got the exact on the 27th, exact Mercury in Virgo, Trine, Pluto and Capricorn, right? Remember I told you that's a long wave energy, but the precision conjunction is the 27th reimagining your life in some way, some way that's big and huge and, and um, kind of sticks. Now another um, kind of concrete um, energy is on the 28th, Mars and Gemini is gonna try and Saturn and Aquarius. All right, that is uh, great. And again, we still have the Virgo vibe because of, um, of the other energies that are happening, but that Mars in Gemini, right, in a mercurial sign, blessing Saturn in Aquarius, right? As Uranus is still like trying to, you know, give it the business as we, as we say around here. Um, you know, that's it, uh, ideas, inspired ideas. You'll get to test them. It's like, you know, they get to be field tested right away. So really interesting. On the 29th, Venus moves into her secondary ruler, which is Libra. So she likes being there. Um, it's much better feel, more comfortable feel for Libra, for her to be in Libra than it is to be in Virgo. So we can set aside some of that, you know, data, data, computer, computer thinking and embrace more conversations around partnerships and love and, and finding balance and harmony, right? I mean, it's lovely to have Venus in Libra at the same time as the sun being in Libra. So wonderful for all you Libras and Libra risings. Um, now we have a long wave opposition, Mercury across the sky from Neptune. This is going to be from September 29th to October 5th because of the retrograde, right? So it's going to back into that opposition and then go forward still in a wide engagement to that in, 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 opposition. So I really see this as very much like the two of swords in tarot. It's like willfully not wanting to see something. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, um, and, and to the extent you delude yourself about anything, it just, it blocks your progress, right? Um, it even, you know, I think you make better progress if you really believe in what you're doing and you see it and you choose to go there, but to willfully delude or deny yourself in some ways, um, that, the repercussions of that are always difficult and dangerous. So watch that energy. All right, this is a busy, busy astrological month. Um, definitely not as erratic as October is going to be. So, um, you know, the complete September um, write-up is on the blog. It's very detailed, so be sure to check that out so you can mark your calendars. 
and pay attention to um, where these important um, uh, uh, events are occurring in your life and in your chart. I hope this was useful and helpful. Um, thank you for your patience. I know it's kind of long. Um, and I'll uh, do the tarot. See what the tarot has to say about September. Please comment, please like, please share with a friend if you can. Bye. Hi. Sticking with our outer doors theme here. This is going to be our Lotus Tarot spread for the month of September. 2022 a very um, very interesting month I feel like there's a lot of beneficial flows of energy this month there's a lot of positivity a lot of talking a lot of thinking hopefully a lot of doing too Lotus spread for the collective for the month of September. Now we start out with our card of the basic influence of the past. This is the King of Pentacles. So we've been trying to stabilize, secure resources, pay attention to our money, our time, our energy, practical earthly stuffs. And this is you, the sun. All right, you're wanting to shine. You're really kind of feeling yourself and like you're, you're feeling a little bit more empowered. Maybe you're really starting to realize that you are a manifester and, and you're um and you can maybe identify your gifts and talents and you want to bring those forward so that's lovely the environment that you bring that into is the seven of cups so many choices but this can also be you know you you have all these choices but you're not making any choices right you're just sitting back and contemplating them all and you have to choose right we can't have everything we can't do everything Having that all bullshit is overrated. Beginning, the culmination of the influences is the six of pentacles. All right, where are you going to devote your energy? How are you going to pour your energy forth into the world? Okay, this is one of the choices that you need to make. Key card for the future, four of pentacles. A suggestion that you pull back a little bit and be a little more conservative. All right, slow it down a little bit. Take your time. Do not be expending that much. You're, you're probably, you're leaking resources. You're leaking time. You're leaking energy. Mend those leaks. Opposite forces in play. Three of wands. So some, some initial completion. You, you are moving in the right direction. Or knight of wands. You're feeling impatient and you're just like, let's go. Let's go anyways. I'm not, I'm not in the natural building phase. I'm in the let's go phase. All right, two different approaches to the energy. All right, the near future, the lovers. This is fantastic, this is great news. This is um, something potentially perfect, something you're really enamored with, something you really desire coming your way. So watch for that. Um, all right, make sure I'm not flashing you, darlings. All right, um, near future. All right, the modifiers, King of Cups. Well, he came up last week in the reading too, interesting. So King of Cups, this kind of um, intuitive, making intuitive decisions to, to like big intuitive decisions. Or the difficult emotion card, this came up last week as well. So, you know, Knight of Wands, right? You're striving, you're going for it and there's some complications. Now we need two more cards here, so let's see what pairs with the King of Cups, that Five of Pentacles. Potential of feeling like you don't belong or you don't have the time, the money, you don't have the time. You're left out in some way. Or, Two of Pentacles, you find balance, you restore balance, all right? And then let's get the, um, the, the um, the possible uh, solutions or progressions. We've got the Four of Wands, Happy Family over here. Four of Cups, just assuming everything's gonna work out over here. Paired with the Four of Wands, we have the Queen of Swords, Logic. Over here, we have the Six of Wands, being honored for success. Wow, okay. So let's think about this. 
we start out with, right, we come to this card, the Four of Pentacles, where we're being told, slow down, conserve your resources, all right? And then we have to kind of choose whether we're gonna be like, kind of rest in power and be like, okay, natural progressions are being made, or we're gonna strive, we're gonna push, all right? Now, if you kind of let things unfold, right, that natural progression, either way, you're gonna to come to something that you really want or is really awesome for you. It's really good for you. Now, you can approach it intuitively, and, 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 and you have to really feel into it because you're not sure. There's some uncertainty both ways, right? So you're either making decisions based on intuition and, and then maybe, maybe not having enough resources, but then this, this potential outcome is good. You know, you're logical. Maybe you switch from the king energy to the queen energy and you score that comfortable, happy home. Over here, we've got this, you know, going for it, right? The knight of wands, you, you go for it, the lovers come, you get what you want, or at least you see what you want. Then you're conflicted about it, right? You think, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I gotta weigh out my odds. It's almost like you delayed the decision-making. And then, you know, good things come to you. Good things come to you and you get some recognition, right? Um, but you almost have to step back and let the magic happen, all right? So one is a more active, one is, one is more active and then passive, one is more passive and then active, right? But either way, I think you're really gonna come out with a good outcome for the month. These are really positive cards. Um, it's just, it's a question of your approach, right? Um, and so, so for some of you, you'll feel like you have to move forward, right? It's not gonna feel comfortable. As long as you do it in a balanced way, let your guides come through and help you, right? Let people help you, experience that help, like wait for it, you'll get the recognition. Over here, you've got that natural progression, you kind of intuit some things and then you're like, wait, I'm not sure this is right. But then things do come together. You exhibit that log logic and understanding and it does come together. Well, I hope this is useful, helpful. Have a wonderful month. Bye.